Welcome to The Craft. I'm your host, Mae Globus. This podcast is a collection of intimate conversations on artistry, mastery, and life with talented, passionately curious creatives and entrepreneurs. Most are dear friends, some are those I've admired from afar. I hope you enjoy these conversations, this exploration of the humanity that connects all of us as much as I do having them. Thank you for being here and for listening. DJ Big Jacks is not only one of the most talented musicians and DJs in Canada, he's also one of the most humble, kind humans you'll ever meet. He discovered his love for music at a young age, going to record stores with his father, and quickly carved himself a career in Toronto's music scene before expanding his reach from coast to coast. Jay is the official DJ for Aritzia and co-founder of GGBR Records with music producer Bozak Morris. In this conversation, We talk about his perspective around the Black Lives Matter movement over this last year, creativity and connection, the origins of his nickname, Young Snack Lord, and more. Please enjoy this conversation with the amazing DJ Big Jacks. Jay, welcome to the craft. Yes, Jay, May, thank thank you for having me. You know what? I'm so happy you're here um, remotely. You're my my first remote guest. So Toronto, Vancouver. You make it happen. I, I remember you first. You came to me like a while ago with this idea to to sit down and speak on stuff. So I'm glad we finally made it happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the hurdles and distances and and viruses where we we here. <laughs> yes, we here. I gotta love technology too. Yeah. So I always like to start off with how we connected, and yes. it was very modern. We connected on Twitter. Um, yeah. I it was way back in the day. And yeah. uh, I believe that you had put out some mix for Aritzia and I loved it and I retweeted it. And I think you basically said, thanks. And yeah. we just started chatting and then, um, yeah, Twitter friends to real life friends. Yeah. And, you know, I appreciate you for that. Cause like, you know, um, I always feel like, you know, if I see people support my stuff, like I always, you know, take it to heart. I really appreciate it. So I like to, you know, let people know, yeah. and whatnot you know some people just like you know it might be like hey cool thanks you know you're welcome blah blah and then some people I actually get to like really connect with you know and you're someone who you know I was able fortunate grateful to connect with in real life and actually become friends with you yeah. know all these years yeah and you know there was just something about even online I could tell that you had such a a kind and generous energy so you know that emanates in everything that you do and I just wanted you to know that yeah, thank you. And, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm glad it happened. And um, it's crazy because, I mean, it's a small world. We have, like, a lot of mutual friends and whatnot, too. So it was just like, mm. it was bound to happen. Mm-hmm. World's a small place. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you were born and raised in Toronto? Uh, yeah. So just, like, um, outside, just, like, in the suburbs of greater Toronto area. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I've always just, yeah, been out here and then just been... Um, yeah, just been heavily involved in you know Toronto's music scene and and whatnot. You know, from a from a young age. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, tell me more about that. I'd love to know more about you know your younger self and you know your parents, all of that. Yeah. Like, what shaped you? Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know like what it was like exactly. I mean, <clears throat> if you look on my my SoundCloud page and my MixCloud too, uh, the profile picture is me as a kid listening to Michael Jackson Thriller, right? And uh, I still have that particular album today, too, that's in the picture. But um, I guess for for whatever reason, it was always something that music always spoke to me. It was always something that I was attracted to from from a kid before I even really knew Mm -hmm. what I wanted to do or get into. I was always into music. Mm -hmm. And I I always felt very fortunate about that because some people don't really figure out their passions until later in life. Some people don't figure it out at all. Right. And for me, it was always very clear cut that music was what I loved. Mm-hmm. And was it an influence at all from um, your parents or it was just this passion that you developed strictly on your own? Yeah, I feel like there was probably a, a bit of both where like, you know, my dad was really into music more so than like my mom. My mom, you know, she likes music and stuff too. But like my dad, he was always very like, you know, he was very into Calypso <clears throat> and jazz and all that kind of stuff. And he used to take me to like the record store when I was a kid 
And I didn't even really think about it. I just, I mean, I remember it. I totally remember it, but I didn't even really think about that because, I mean, that was just commonplace, right? Mm. Get your music. So um, I definitely feel like he played a role. You know, he he was buying records. He was buying vinyl back then. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm still buying vinyl today and, and all that. So I definitely think he played a, you know, he played a pivotal role in just influencing me. But in terms of, like, the actual music that I got into, I mean, like, like I said, he had his own taste. And I was into different stuff. Mm. And, you know, he's um, you know, he's from the Caribbean, you know, from Antigua. So, like, you know, he had that heavy influence. But me, I was always, you know, in North America and Canada growing up here. So I was really influenced by, like, you know, hip-hop and R&B and just, like, you know, Black American music. Just because yeah. it was... And it was just something that was so, like, young and fresh at the time, too. Like, you know, there's kids now who don't know the world without hip-hop. But, mm. you know, like... Even though I was still pretty young, I mean, like, hip-hop wasn't always around, um, like, in the, definitely not in the form it is today. So, um, but yeah, that was something that just kind of, like, I think I just got inspired by that, just being out here, and it was music that spoke to me, mm-hmm. you know? I, I mean, as a kid, too, I just liked, you know, I liked hearing, like, you know, the cuss words in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, loving the swears. <laughs> what was your first, uh, what was your first final record? Oh man, like the first one that I actually bought myself, I don't even know like the, the exact first one. Like I said, like the Michael Jackson thriller <clears throat> was like something that I always had because my parents had bought it and, you know, there was other stuff. But I I started buying records probably like my own stuff and like my own money when I was in about grade eight or so. So um, I don't even remember like the exact, first thing but there was like a few things that I remember but like it wasn't like oh yeah I remember I bought this album as my very first album it was kind of mm-hmm. like a bunch. it was like a collection of something yeah I mean before that though like I remember um I had like the rap tracks compilations like um on cassette because it would just kind of have like whatever popular hits were at the time mm-hmm. so that was probably like one of the first things I remember getting back in the day mm-hmm and then how did you transition into the DJing portion? Or was there some sort of, um, yeah, what was a natural pathway to it? Yeah, for, for me, I was always really interested in radio. So like, so radio was another influence for me, like, <clears throat> excuse me, growing up and, and learning about music, learning about hip hop. I mean, in Toronto, uh, we didn't have a major um, urban station you know Canada didn't really have that at all at the time we had like energy 108 and stuff like that which played like a lot of dance music but then you would have like the hip-hop shows like mastermind at night so I used to listen to like a lot of radio because that was like where I would learn about music and that would kind of be my outlet and I was always just fascinated again it was just something that spoke to me it just drew to me so I would listen I'd be like Yo, how did how come I'm hearing all these songs, but it's like seamless and it just never ends. And every like one song blends into the next one. And like, then I started to kind of get it. And I like at the time I had never really seen the process. I just kind of heard it, but it was always something that, that intrigued me and spoke to me. So radio was like a big thing. And, you know, I still do radio today. So like radio is something that really spoke to me just as a lover of music and then just a lover of, of, of DJing. So that was kind of really what got me into that Mm -hmm. and and did you just pick up some equipment and start you know doing things on your own did you yeah how did how did you like get into it officially officially yeah I mean like um you know we had a record player we had a turntable but you know everyone's parents probably had one at the time and it was like the belt drive turntables which is not meant for like scratching and DJing right so the belt drive motor is like you know, when you put the record on and touch it, it's like, like, you know, so like, you know, anyone who knows that stuff will know what I'm talking about. But, um, so I remember like wanting to DJ, but like, you know, even though we had a record player, I couldn't use that one that my dad had because it just wasn't meant for DJing. So I had to save up money. So I saved up money for my, like my first pair of like Techniques 1200s, which I still have today. I'm actually sitting on one right here. Um, yeah, so I saved up the money for what I needed to do to 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 get the equipment. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I thought I never really had, like, lessons. It was just, again, me listening me, me listening and watching. So I would go and, like, be around people who would DJ, and I would watch them. I would listen to them, and then everything was self-taught. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What was the yeah. what was the music scene like back then when you were coming up? Like, how would you describe it back then in comparison to now? Oh, it was just so different, right? Because I mean, like everything, like um, <clears throat> in terms of discovery, like discovering music. You know, you had to listen to the radio. You had to listen. You had to watch much music. You know, I would tape Rap City every day and just tape like whatever videos would be coming out. I'd be taping the radio every day, taping all the different shows throughout the week. And um, you really had to like look for it. It wasn't like how it is today where it's everywhere. Hip hop is such a big business now and, and that music, just, you know, black music in general, like it's so easy to find now. Mm-hmm. And back then it, was, it wasn't easy to find. So when you did find it, like you really cherished it too. Cause it was just like, oh man. And then meeting other friends or other people like like-minded individuals too like that was really super cool because just again it was just like the access to it and then the internet changed everything right 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 do you miss yeah. that that do you miss that kind of discovery uh i mean yes and no i mean i still like to me like music discovery never ends so like every day i'm discovering something new like mm. literally every day you know, there's new music coming out and if it's something that to me it's like it's either you know you haven't heard it before or you've heard it before right so it's not even like new and old right mm. so um um and there's still so many ways to d- discover stuff so yeah i mean there's definitely like an innocence there that was kind of missed from back in the day but like you know you just, just have to change with the times yeah exactly. just like it's anything like, yeah I, I don't feel like oh man i wish it was like how it was back in 1995 like it was cool yeah i'm glad but like you know mm-hmm. we're at a different point now totally yeah. And so now you are the official DJ for Aritzia and you also co-founded your own record label, GGBR, yeah. um, with your longtime business partner, Bozak Morris. Uh, what yeah. uh, what um, prompted you to start your own label? Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, man, it was like, it was just like a platform for us to put out music. It wasn't even, we weren't thinking, and even like, Bozak didn't come into the picture for the label until after, but Bozak's been my homie from time, like from, from like, you know, he was someone who I connected with back in high school, you know, so I've known him since then. And so we were always friends. We were always good homies. Like he's my best friend, right? That's like my brother right there. But um, I, I was working on music before he was. So I started the, the label off and it was just like, again, I wasn't thinking, oh, let's do it. Let's make a label where we can do something out of this. It was more like, yo, I want to put out some music. Me and Matt cut corners were working on music and it was just like, okay, I need somewhere to put this out on. So mm. let's, let's create something to put this out on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Basically cut out any, any intermediaries and just do it, yeah. do it on your own. Seems yeah. like so a lot like, of, go ahead. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So like, it wasn't really like, it wasn't like a thing where it was like, okay, yeah, you know what, let's start a label. It was just more out of like necessity of like, you know, I need, <laughs> I need to like. You need a platform. To, yeah, to I need to give us like a name or something, right? Right, yeah. And do you think a lot of artists are kind of um, nowadays doing that, like trying to find ways to cut out intermediaries and do it themselves, like have more ownership over the pro- the process of how they put music out there? Yeah, I, I would I would hope so. I, I still think there's probably some people who, who look at that, like, you know, they want a major label deal or they want to be a major label artist or whatever. But I think a lot of the people who are really smart and tapped in are going to go the indie route. You're going to definitely do your best to cut out the middleman as much as possible. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And there's so many good platforms for it now. We're like, you know, we've sold tons of records just through Bandcamp. Like we had like little to no distribution, like no like real, we put a few records in shops here and there, like locally or like overseas when we travel, but mm-hmm. like we don't really, you know, we've done a lot of it just independently through the internet, yeah. through Instagram, through Twitter, through socials, right? Yeah. I guess that's why artists are are so, in terms of what they're doing on, on social, they're putting a lot of their effort into it because um, in that way, they, they control their, their brand and they develop yeah. that loyalty. And then when, I guess, you put out music, people are just like, yeah, no, I, I want that because, yeah. you know, they've developed that with the audience. And, and I, think, I think that's important, too, just to, like, to, to have stuff where, like, artists work on this music is like, this is your art. This is like your baby. This is your heart right there. So I feel it's very important that like we have tangible products 
to put out. Like, you know, you bought one of my records recently, you know, which I appreciate. Like, you know, like when I'm gone and like, I'm not here anymore, these things are still going to be here. Right. And like, who knows if Spotify and all these other platforms are still going to be a thing 10, 15, 20 years from now. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but the tapes, the CDs, the the vinyl, and just like the actual tangible product that you can hold is still going to be here. So I think that's very important. And I, I'm hoping more, you know, artists think that way and, and, and see that. I'm, I'm seeing it, you know, mm-hmm. I'm seeing people do it. And I'm seeing, like, your fans, you know, they, they love to support. They want to have a piece of the artist, their favorite artist's work, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And limited edition things too, right? Those those, yeah. those special pieces of of work and creation. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah the, that's the whole thing too, where they want to be included in something where, like, you know, they feel special. Like, this is mine. I have it. I own it. and not everyone has this either. Like, yeah. you know, you really got to kind of be cool and up on it to have that shit. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And, and, you know, what has this last year been like for you? I mean, a total shutdown of, of the industry for a year and, and counting. Yeah. And I know you and I have had conversation before um, when I was in Toronto, you know, taking my work sabbatical. Um, you know, you and I had some great conversations about um, many different things with my yeah. friend Christina, who was also a podcast guest. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, tell me about your experience of this last year and how you've you've made it through and coped with it, and or or maybe you know didn't cope for yeah, it at it, first. Yeah, it's crazy because it's it's been about a year now that I've been home. Um, the last place I was in was was Vancouver. <laughs> like I remember, I was like in Vancouver, like the week this this coming week a year a year ago. And um, I, I went back to Toronto on the 13th. And like I remember just thinking, like, oh, man, I don't know when I'm going to go back out here. I don't know what's going to happen now because everything was just starting to shut down. So, like, when that started to happen, you know, just a lot of uncertainty, right? And there's still a lot of uncertainty for, like, you know, for my industry and, like, when it's going to be able to start to bounce back and how it's going to recover. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, for me, that that initial shock that first like month or so month and a half maybe two months it was really just like processing everything like yo like like what the hell is going on like what the hell is happening right and i think once i got over that initial hurdle and that initial shock i was able to get back to creating like working on music working on art working on just different ideas and stuff like that and um that's really what helped me get through Mm -hmm. you know just being able to like I'm fortunate that I was able to get back to that because maybe not everyone was in that position or felt that way. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, that was for me. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, you know, my my friend Garrett, who was my uh, Garrett Louie, you you know him as well. Yeah, uh, he G-Man. was G Man. He was he was saying that he he knows a lot of DJs that for the first time they had to go out and and get full time jobs like wherever wherever they could, whether it was like a UPS. Yeah delivery driver or did you did you see a lot of your peers also having to do that yeah i mean um i haven't like seen or spoke to to everybody to really know and like you know everyone's kind of doing their thing and like, i don't really want to pry necessarily unless it comes up but uh i mean you gotta do what you gotta do right if you got mm. a family you've got you know kids a uh, wife or whatever you want to you know you gotta you gotta make the ends meet yeah. Right, uh, whatever you do, get served, sell drugs, whatever, right? Yeah, just get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been kind of crazy and interesting, and I still feel fortunate. Like, you know, my income got cut down, and I still have some stuff coming in, you know, I still have some work coming in, and I've still been able to create. But, um, I mean, you, again, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were doing that, and you can't fault them because we don't know, especially for people in our position in, in nightlife, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, like we already saw, I saw so many venues and stuff closed down within the first few months of this. Like you mean right? completely. Once, yeah. Like closed. completely like, like they're done. So who knows, like by the time when we get out of this, where we can start to go be outside again for what we do what venues are even going to be there for us and like what institutions are going to be there for us to even like get back to. Right. Right. So that amount will be smaller, which means, you know, same amount of DJs probably, but less places for it. 
Yeah, to it's, play. it's but you know, at the same time, it's like um, it's been interesting because you know, DJ has started to stream, started to do Twitch, and I haven't been streaming myself, but I've been you know very supportive of, of anyone who's doing that, and I always you know keep my my my, my finger on the pulse, watching, and and I you know like I'll, I'll be showing up at people's streams and just you know just hanging out, mm-hmm. but like. That's a that's a new that's a whole avenue now. Like DJs are were like learning to maneuver that, to learning that in the last year. And mm-hmm. I'm sure you maybe spoke to to Cut about that and everything too, because he's been heavily streaming. Mm. But like um, <clears throat> that, that's going to be an option too. Like you know, when we get back to when things are when people are outside again, streaming is going to be a, an option for DJs too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's kind of cool. Even though we might have lost some venues in real life venues mm. the streaming platform has you know brought a lot of opportunities and i think we're just seeing the beginning of it right you know? so in your deduction do you do you see that the industry has um shifted is it going to be it's not going to go like fully back to how it used to be or do you think there's going to kind of be a balance between that old world and sort of like this this streaming world and where people have had to maneuver to yeah i feel like you know because even like even before all this there was still like the different worlds within djing right you have some people who just do corporate and weddings some people who do radio some people who do clubs some people who just tour you know doing this or doing that right so it's like i think we're eventually going to go back to that but now you also have that streaming element and mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who like maybe don't want to dj in clubs don't want to do this and do that but they right. enjoy streaming and they have a good audience on twitch or wherever right yeah. so it's a new audience. yeah that's yeah that's that's actually interesting the the point you make about you know, maybe some people don't want to go back to to the venues. I'm I'm curious. Are you? Do you consider yourself more an introvert or an extrovert? Meaning, do you get your energy from people and being around people, or are yeah. you more the opposite, where you know you do have to kind of remove yourself to refill back up? Oh, it's it's a bit of both. I think when it comes to like actually DJing and playing, like i definitely feed off the crowd i love traveling i love going out and meeting people shaking hands and just you know just like you know when we first got to like meet up in person like i love that like i that's one thing i've always prided myself on is just being connected to the people who support me and the people who mess with what i do right so Mm -hmm. missing that energy definitely it's a lot you know because i love to do that that's one of the reasons too why streaming hasn't spoke to me as much i when i have streamed i've really enjoyed it but like it takes a lot sometimes to like feed off the energy that's not there that you kind of have to manufacture when you're, mm. you, know, you know, streaming and stuff right like that. So, um, I definitely think I have my extroverted moments, but I'm also kind of introverted too. And there's certain times where I like to kind of create on my own too. Mm-hmm. But I also like to be like, you know, if if me and Matt will bounce ideas back off of each other and whatever, like I like that too. Like I like being around people too, where like they can kind of give me another perspective. So yeah, a little bit. More. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're about the connection and, and creating yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to go back to this, this past year. And um, again, a conversation that me, you and Christina were having in, in Toronto. And I remember when we were, we were talking, we were, we were talking about the whole black lives matter movement. And I remember feeling your, your pain Do you want to tell Mm -hmm. me what that was like last year? You've got the pandemic and then you had this movement and all of those things that you were trying to reconcile all at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it it was a lot because, I mean, like, here's the thing, and I might have said it to you before, where, like, racism has been happening. It's still happening today. It's been happening since the beginning of time, (laughs) you know what I mean? For, like, for, you know, for Black people, we've been feeling it forever. You know, people of color have been feeling it you know what I'm saying? So like that was nothing new on a certain level, but it was interesting to see people like actually <laughs> realize that all the shit we've been saying for years is actually true. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, um, yeah, I mean, it was a bit overwhelming. I, I'm hoping that people are starting to really kind of wake up and, and be more conscious of it. You know, I think it's, it's rooted so deeply that a lot of people like it's going to take a long time to really 
change people unless they really want to change. But I do think I still I still remain positive. I feel like with everything that was happening last year, um, you know, I feel like the younger generations are a little more like active and really trying to do stuff. To and just, yeah, you know, like yeah. just like inclusivity now, whether it be like for the different races, for 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 women, you know, for um, just the different all the different groups and categories that are out there that need and representation people are more conscious of it right mm-hmm. these days so um i think that you know that's a good thing so even though you know it was it's been a lot to deal with but i feel like it's for the, mm-hmm. the greater good at the end of the day so i, I hope <laughs> yeah i know that um you know you've been open in in the past um you know when i was i was doing my research um you know you you've had some instances of, of racism even within um the industry and i know that you had been vocal about you know a, a tweet or two about it and do you still find um that uh venues are genre banning to prevent certain types of groups from being attracted to venues yeah i mean i, I mean it's something that's always kind of happened and i'm sure you've been in you know spaces and dealt with clients and people that I mean, you know how this shit goes, where, like, people, if a lot of coded language, and, you know, I think for me, it was, like, really realizing that, like, a lot of the racism and the white supremacy and just, like, really that kind of shit, it wasn't really presented in a way where, like, okay, this is, like, blatant, like, it's not, like, some Ku Klux Klan Nazi shit, necessarily, Mm -hmm. but it'd be, like, a lot of people just kind of, like, saying, well, yeah, you know, can you, like, maybe make it a little more you know, less thuggish or this, you know, just using like certain words and certain terms. So, and I feel like that's something that's never going to fully go away, yeah. but I do think. How does that make you feel when someone would say that to you? Yeah, it's it's, it's weird because I'm just so used to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just so used to like being in those situations where like you kind of, you got to put on your, your happy picture. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like That must feel hard for you to have to do that though. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those things where, like, because it just happens so much and it's just such commonplace that you often don't think about it. And then I think, like, once things start to really, really come out, um, I thought about it a lot more. And I thought about all the times where, like, it did happen and I kind of just suppressed it or I kind of didn't even really fully process what was happening, even Mm -hmm. though I knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. Um. Will it ever go away? I don't think it's ever, it's not going to go away until racism goes away. And I don't know if that's ever going to fully go away because it's just, it's so deeply embedded within culture and like just the the standard of, you know, whiteness being, you know, this is, or this is supposed to be the standard and this is like the model thing, right? So as long as that is, you know, the precedent for people, it's always going to be around. Mm-hmm. in some capacity right right yeah i mean i i know that you're um a, such a positive person and i like i love that about you and you know if if i say came to you or a friend said came to you and said you know what i i want to learn more like how can yeah. i be a better support to you and my yeah. other friends of color like what would you say to me or someone who asked you that if they wanted to say i want to learn more well i definitely think you should um and anyone who asked that question just like you know go out and do do the research i I think people need to remember not to don't expect you know black people or any any anyone any marginalized group where you know you're trying to help don't expect them to do the work for you don't expect them to be like okay well you need to read this you need to look this up like that's the work that people need to do that this, so that's one thing and then you know people need to make sure that they're like doing their best to to be vocal to to say to do stuff to, to stand up and to have people's backs you know what i mean like you can't just post up a black square and think it's all good or think you did your part if you're not actually you know mm-hmm. doing your part mm-hmm. so right? d- to you does that that look, look like that looks like going out and reading and and learning and not, not doing these performative types yeah, yeah, of su- a, support. Yeah, um, no, like you got to actually like, you actually got to do it. You know what I mean? Like if you truly care and, I, and there are people who do, and I've seen like, you know, there's people who I've spoken to who 
you know, I feel like <clears throat> they kind of noticed, like, well, maybe they kind of, like, were complacent to stuff before, and now they're making the effort. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's all, to me, that's all, that, like, it's like, okay, you know, if it happened, it happened, but, like, now what are you going to do about it? Now that you're aware, and some people care, some people don't. So mm-hmm. that's another thing, too. I just work to spread that to the people who do care to change, because a lot of people don't care. They're, they're, they're set in their ways, and no matter what you say or do, People just want to go back to what they, what they yeah. know and are comfortable with. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, it's just, it's 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 holding each other accountable. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> you know, using if you have a voice, if you have a platform, using it to 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 bring awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, just you know, standing up and just you know, truly being like an ally, and doing what you can to speak up. You know what I mean? Like, I tweeted something the other day um, in regards to like women's inclusion in like um dj streams right because mm. so like a, a lot of times you're seeing like they have like what they call like the the raid groups right like or raids raids where um they might have like a group of djs playing like okay we're gonna do like a marathon thing from like you know for six hours and we'll have different djs playing <clears throat> and a lot of times i was seeing like a lot of dudes were just making like these lineups of just dudes <laughs> and it's like okay like you know, where the women at? What are you doing to uplift women to put them on and you know give them give them space too. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think like, you know, as men, we need to hold each other accountable. You know, and, and like when I tweeted that, I wasn't even saying like, hey, what are y'all dudes doing? Like I you know, including myself too, where I'm just like, yo, let's let's do better. Let's be just conscious of it. You know, if you're not doing it, if you are doing it cool, if you're not doing it, this is your reminder that we gotta keep that in mind and make that effort. That's amazing. I mean, I know, I know that you're extremely supportive of your female DJ friends. You're always shouting them out. Of course. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. So I think like, and that just goes back to what I was saying about like being an ally and just using your platform to call people on stuff and just like bring awareness to whatever, whether it be, you know, uh, racism, sexism, you know, homophobia, just, all just the different issues that people are dealing with that marginalized groups are dealing with just like using our platforms to say something and do something you know right. and actually be a again not, not on some performative shit actually do, yeah do the work. and you know and, and acknowledging too like I, there's lots of things that i had to reflect on too um on, on myself too. being a person of color <laughs> um yeah. as, as well um you know things that i will never say or or do again that i had never really thought about um and, um, you know, I, I think that, yeah, I think going out and doing the work, but also understanding, and this probably comes from, um, as you know, I took my sound therapy certification. And yeah. one part of it is because you'll have clients who will come to you and they're dealing with a lot of emotional trauma. And um, one, of, one of the things that we learned is the trauma-informed practice, meaning that people will come to you and there's all kinds of layers of trauma. So there's a trauma that they experience just in their life, but then there's yeah. the trauma they inherit from epigenetics. So colonialism, sexism, racism, yeah. and that's all embedded in, in, in so many of us. And we, that's, and that's the, that's I'm the saying. invisible it's trauma. Deep. It's so deep, right? Like just, you know, where we've been conditioned so deeply with a lot, and like, you know, we can't even see it sometimes until you really, like you said, you know, you, you had to ask yourself questions and kind of look at yourself. And I did the same thing for my, myself. I'm always trying to do better. And I look at situations where, like, did I do the right thing? Did I stand up? Was I being an ally for this group, for these people? Or mm. was I being complacent? You know mm. I mean? So, it, you know, it's a question that I ask myself a lot. And, uh, you know, I, and I want to do the work to make sure that, you know, I'm doing better, at least to just be that that support mm-hmm. for the people who do you know, my friends and just, you know, even if you're not my friend, just my, just people in general. Yeah. In, in the moments where, um, you know, you feel intense feeling or, or anger, do you have any things that you do to kind of bring yourself back to center to make sure that your, um, yeah, that your state of mind is, um, as clear as can be or, or, or balanced? Like we're we're all supposed to feel our emotions, but, you know, not to live in them, um, for too too long yeah i try to uh you know just do 
to take, take a breath, take, you know, several breaths, mm-hmm. um, go for a walk, uh, maybe speak to a few close friends, just like to kind of vent or just, you know, have a conversation, but at, or at the very least, just like, just have someone to kind of like, listen to me for a second, mm. get my chest. But um, yeah, definitely just being outside, being able to just go for a walk and just clear my head a little bit. Yeah. 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 Are you um are you feeling hopeful for this year? Are you are you are you a optimist? I'm I'm definitely you know optimistic and I feel hopeful. That's what I said. Like you know when I was talking about like the younger generation, I'm very hopeful for for them and what they're going to be bringing to the table like 20 years from now or whatever. Like I said, like these things aren't going to be able to be rectified overnight. Uh, but I'm hopeful. And with that said, I'm hopeful for, you know, for this year, we're, we're at least seeing a vaccine rollout. You know, people are getting vaccinated. There's things are happening, at least on, on a certain level. It's not like it's been a year in and we're totally stuck in the same place we were a year ago. Mm-hmm. You know, even though government has dropped the ball on a lot of shit, like mm-hmm. it's still at least like things are happening. So I am hopeful. I mean, you got to be hopeful because like, yeah, it's not great, but things are happening and, and life is still going on so right yeah yeah and we're all we're more resilient than we than we think like i mean if you look at this year i mean even even you like i i feel how lucky i am being on on the west coast um but right now you guys are in a you know pretty big lockdown i i think still at at this moment things are Uh, kind of opening up a little bit but things opened up today actually whoa okay um you know, like I said, like I'm in I'm in the suburbs, so like where I'm at, um, that was still mostly open. But mm-hmm. like other suburbs, like Peel Region, like I'm in York Region, mm-hmm. Peel Region, uh, Peel Region, just like they're kind of in the gray area, and then Toronto itself um, just opened up again today. But I don't know, if, like honestly, mate, like who knows what's gonna happen? Like a yeah, month from absolutely now, right. Where like are we gonna go back into lockdown? I don't know. Yeah, we'll yeah. And you're contending with a bigger winter too. So, you know, you're sort of inside. So, uh, you know, you inside. I, I, hope you, I hope you've been very grateful about like being on the West Coast and the West Coast weather. Cause like, mm-hmm. I mean, I know y'all get the rain and shit, but like, I still see people's stories. I'm like, damn, it's like 10 degrees and like, you know, kind of decent. Like, cause I mean, we're getting, we're getting, weather's getting a little bit better, but we still like, yo, the winter, winter time was tough, man. I, I was, yeah. I was worried about, just being able just going through the winter being stuck inside for most of the year yeah yeah a lot of my friends were definitely struggling heavily with mental health throughout the winter and i think they're they're kind of coming around the corner now that it's it's uh warming up a little bit but yeah um i'm I'm glad that you know you've always got such good spirits i mean yeah you you know you you got to right because like (laughs) You, you got to keep going. You got to find ways to just keep yourself motivated, even on yeah. um, the times, you know, and it, it, it's been tough. There's been ups and downs mm-hmm. and whatnot, but, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do to keep going. Yeah. But, what, so. uh, what keeps you inspired? Like, what are you looking to for inspiration right now as you're in this really creative phase, which I know you've been in since like fall. Yeah, you know, honestly, even even before that, yeah. like really, like I said, like once, once, once the initial shock wore off as to like what was <laughs> what we were going through, what was happening, you know, I got I was able to get back into like a, a a groove and a rhythm, and so like pretty much, you know, this entire time I've been able to you know feel creative and productive, but um, yeah, just being inspired because like I got things that I want to do. You know what I mean? And like, I, I, I haven't got to the places that I want to go yet. So that's one thing that keeps me inspired. Seeing other colleagues and other friends doing their thing and just seeing people still like, seeing people make things happen. Like you said, that resiliency, right? Seeing the resiliency people have had where like, and like, just seeing like certain things that I envisioned that I wanted to do, like, you know, I was able to do it. So I'm like, you know what? I, <clears throat> I got to keep this going. Mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Those kind of things keep me inspired. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice that, you know, you're naming like other people are keeping you inspired, actually. It's not, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, de- definitely. I mean, like, 
because you know yeah you see people doing stuff you hear people doing stuff and it's just like yo you know i like that i love seeing that and that's giving me like that's giving me hope yeah so that's making me I just like get all my shit and get my stuff together and just like keep it going i love that is there anything that we can look out from from you coming out well yeah like i was telling you like i've been just working on some music and stuff and i mean people have known me for years obviously for like the mixes and and all that and um <clears throat> i've put out a bunch of remixes and blends and you know i love doing all that kind of stuff but um i've never actually released my own like original music mm. yet so that's exciting that's, yeah, yeah yeah you know like um i just got the the masters back for my my first single and um i don't have like a set date yet but that, that's coming out soon mm-hmm. so it, it might be out by the time this this comes out who knows but yeah, uh yeah. it's it's coming um so people can find it on your band camp which i'll put all of this in the show notes but where where can people find it once it it drops yeah once the once the single the single is, is called higher and it's uh it's i got just an upbeat like you know fun r&b song um it features a an upcoming vocalist by the name of angela apigo and then it's produced by myself and cut corners nice. and um Shout that out to be, Matt as yeah, well. Matt. Matt, that's the homie, man. That's my that's my bro right there too. And um, <clears throat> that that will be on like streaming and stuff like mm. that. So that will be like available. Like I might put it on Bandcamp eventually. I don't even know. I, I might. I don't. I didn't even really think about that because it's just kind of like yo. Let me just drop this debut single thing, put it out. Um, so that's going to be on like streaming. Like it'll be available where everything's available. Nice. And, like, yeah. we'll make so, we'll make sure to to um do a shout out again when it when it does yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm really excited for that because that's something new where like these are ideas and things that, that i've had in my head for for years and then i started working on this batch of music a while ago and i kind of like it, it was happening but then you know like we were still go 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 this is like before covid hit so things were still happening so like even though it was kind of in progress I kind of put it on the back burner because of certain other things. Mm-hmm. Then COVID hit. <clears throat> so it was like, well, shit, you know what? If there's a time to do it. Yeah. This, now is the time. Yeah. Does it feel good putting out something that's yours? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, it does feel good. I mean, you know, things I put up before have been like you know, my ideas or whatever, but like, this is something where like I'm stepping into, I feel like, you know, when you can feel like it's time for like a new chapter. And I know you can feel test of this because yeah. you know you, you've made a lot of big changes in the last you know couple of years for yourself right mm-hmm. so um i just felt like it was time where like these are ideas that i always had and i finally got some things come my way where i'm like yo you know these are the signs that i've been looking for to start to dabble in this world you know what i mean so when it comes to like production <clears throat> and like songwriting and stuff like that too so like you know i've been just writing you know, writing a lot of the, the, the songs. So um, that's been something new for me. That, Incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I've been kind of really excited about. So like to hear all those ideas that I had in my head that I kind of questioned to them, like, because I'm not like, I'm not a singer myself. You know, I can like maybe hold a note, but, you know, I'm not going to serenade you and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was interesting just because like I had all these ideas and I started writing songs and then hearing those songs being sung by people who can actually sing and bring the ideas to life is like okay well at least at least i know the ideas when executed by the right people yeah can work yeah. right so it's been exciting yeah seeing that come to life so exciting it, it is you know and it's something new for me like where i still think like a lot of people don't know me for that you know what i mean like they they know the mixes they know i dj but they still don't know me as like an artist in yeah, that form right you know what i mean so this is going to be their introduction and i'm and you know it's a, it's a new chapter it's i new love phase. it i love this for you this yeah, is very I'm, exciting I'm, I'm really excited like it sucks that you know there's certain things that just aren't open right now so i can't like necessarily tour the music or do certain things with it mm-hmm. but uh the, 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 the time will come yeah for sure and you'll so. have your whole community behind you because they they love you 
Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, that, that, that's coming real soon. And like I said, you know, I told you about. It. I actually, yeah. um, <clears throat> I debuted the song on. Uh, I did a live stream actually last week for Serato. Mm -hmm. For for Jam Cam, she has a party called Cowork, and she was doing a, a residency <clears throat> on Serato's Twitch. So uh, she had me play the last one, and uh, I debuted the music on there. So anyone who was in that chat. They, they got to hear it. They but if you weren't there, you'll, you'll hear it eventually. Nice, nice. Uh, I'm just mindful of, of the time because um, I know you're three hours ahead as well. But uh, oh, I, no, I'm good. I mean, like, you can talk as long as you want. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have two two more questions for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, one is, uh, are there any uh, Canadian uh, musicians or, or artists that um, you think people should know about up and coming, emerging? Oh, man, there, there, there's a bunch. There's really, there's a ton. Um, shout out to, to Deja SB. You know, they're doing a lot. Like, they've been making some some waves and look out for Deja. Mm -hmm. So um, look out for, you know, what we've been doing, like with GGBR, but like, you know, what Bozak has been doing, you know, the hip hop scene and then that, you know, Claremont II, he's crazy. Um, <clears throat> Raz Fresco, Future Wave, Ace on Eastwood, you know, you know, for for the hip hop, you know, those those dudes are really dope. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just I know I know I'm like forgetting people. This is like yeah, I can't even yeah. I, after I'm like, oh man, I should have mentioned this person. <laughs> you but, can email um, me after. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there's there's so many things going on. There's so many great producers, you mm -hmm. know, just doing their thing and just like. Yeah, I mean, Canada has yeah. like some incredible talent, you know. Yeah, yeah, they 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 really do. So like, I feel like yeah, I couldn't even like name everybody because there's just there's just so much going on, and there's just like, and there's at the end of the day, there's there's something for everybody. Yeah. You know, whether you want, <clears throat> if you're looking for something more soulful, if you want some like you know, reggae or like Afro beats. Or, oh, actually, yeah, you know what? Um, Zen Soul because you know she she sings and she's really dope. Um. Cheyenne Nicole, mm. uh, Kendra Jade, um, Kennedy Road, uh, Alexi. There's a bunch of people, man. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, def I'll definitely have it on the, on the site. So anyone yeah. who's who's interested, you can you can click through. All those links will be there. Yeah. And um, my final question is the question I yeah. I ask every guest. Um, with what you do, what is it that you want to leave behind in this world? That's a, that's a good question. But really, um, <clears throat> that's something that I've thought about a lot. And like, my biggest thing is just legacy, right? Just leaving, leaving, you know, a legacy that, that I can be proud of, that like any family that might come after me could be proud of, you know what I mean? Just, and just leaving like, just leaving that, just being able to, to 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 connect and touch people, you know what I mean? Like, um, I've been really big on like mentorship and just like guiding. There's a few people who I like I, who I mentor and have under my wing, and I feel like that's big. And just like leaving like a legacy of just like something that you know people can like look back on and be like, you know, like he was a solid person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you know, like he he made good music or good mixes, but he was just like a good person too. And um, I think that's just important. I mean, like, just just to be a good person and just like do your best to just like be the best person you can be. Because I think that's important. A lot of people just aren't doing that. Yeah. Right. Well, you are already a solid human. I'm <clears throat> really, really happy to know you. I'm really happy Twitter brought us together and yeah, brought yeah, you yeah, into no, my I, life. I love, I love to, like I don't love socials, but I love Twitter. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for your time, for sharing your perspective, and uh, Yo, can't can't wait you know. till we get to see each other in real life again. Yeah, are you coming back out here anytime soon? Uh, I don't I don't know just yet, uh, but yeah, I'm sure you know once we we can again, we'll see. Maybe maybe summer. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, like I haven't done any traveling, um, mm. you know, in this past year. Like, so I'm just waiting until like. You know, I get to, get to give back stuff. Yes. And then, um, 
to start thinking about that. Obviously, you know, I could travel if I want, but I just chose not to. Yeah. But um, I do know, like, once I travel again, like, I mean, Vancouver is like a second home to me. So, mm-hmm. like, like, I was literally, honestly, man, like, before this happened, I was literally in van, like, pretty much every month. You were, yeah. Pretty much, pretty much almost every single month from, like, last March to, like, from the summer before that. <clears throat> so um come out here as soon as i can hop back on a plane comfortably i'm i'm going right back nice i I still got some like i got some vouchers for like um because like did we talk about like flare air like how they have the the go pass oh i think so when i was yes when i was there in the fall yeah yeah yeah, they they had like the go pass in which um they they released it right before covid hit and i had bought it so I had that and I was using that, but then COVID hit. I had taken some flights with it, but then like it hit and I'm like, oh man. But the vouchers are still good until next year. So I'm trying to like I got nice. five I got five vouchers. I'm 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 ready to use them as soon as I, I could fly. Again. Yes. <laughs> come come out here in Vancouver and and you know, promo your your single. But yeah, you know, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna come out there. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy that that Vancouver, that that BC greenery. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go right to, to Nam Pen right after that. <laughs> Let's meet there for wings. I'll be there. Put an on pen and I'll go to go to new town. No, I've got a new spot for you on commercial okay. lunch lady. Look it up. Okay. We're okay. going there. Okay. And then I, I heard too that um uh Taco Fino is real fire. I, know, I haven't been to Taco Fino. Oh yeah. But I heard it's real fire too. So I gotta do that. <laughs> we'll make a list. We're gonna hit them all. <laughs> I already got I already got my list, but like yeah, usually when I'm out there like Nam pen is like a staple. Like I always do Nam pen. I mean, we, we we could talk about snacks real quick. Too. I know. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, Nam pen is like that's like yo. I go to Nam pen get my. I know. I know you mentioned the wings. Everyone's about the wings. Personally, I like the um, the beef. The, the, I, I like the squid, like the the garlic squid, and then I like yeah, the beef look like yes. So, um. So yeah, I'll be doing that. But then like yeah, I'm, you know, you know, Vancouver got. You know, the fire sushi, the fire seafood, just fire Asian food in general. We sure do. Actually, yeah. now that we're talking about snacks, where did your your nickname Young Snack Lord come from? I mean, cause, I, mean I love snacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just, yeah, it was a, it was a self, self-titled self nickname. Yeah. It, it was based around ASAP for because he had a song called Trap Lord. Uh, and I was like, yo, I'm a trap lord, yo, I'm a snack lord. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so and then I just you know it's funny I just started like calling myself that for jokes like you know I like snacks but who doesn't like snacks? Very true. And <clears throat> I started calling myself that, and um, yeah, it just it just, it just stuck. stuck. And, <laughs> and, and I mean, I, but like I was also getting like the fire snacks too. So, you know, I, like whether it be like records or snacks, whatever. I like to p- pull out like the rare shit that you've never seen before. Mm. Like yo, what's that? Ooh, you know what I mean? then you know where, you know where we got to go to i um i never been to um dank mart is, is it aberdeen center oh yeah yeah aberdeen center yeah yeah we got to go there I, I need to go to dank mart too i need to do, do dank mart because i heard you know dank mart's all right but oh, um, yeah. aberdeen is like uh, have you ever been to pacific mall in toronto or like in, no it's, it's in like it's borderline toronto markham but yeah. it's basically like the go-to chinese mall and, you know, they got all the fire snacks. So I, I believe like Aberdeen probably pretty similar. I think it's probably pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I can't wait to eat with you and snack with you and just shoot the breeze as always when you're here. Aren't well, there? Oh, you know, another favorite snack. I mean, we went, for, <laughs> we, we went to Pat's when you were yes. in Toronto. Yep. Because, you know, I, I love my, my Caribbean food. Like, I, I, love, I love like American barbecue. I love like Caribbean food. I love soul food, you know, like, I'm, a, you know, I stay black as fuck with my food, <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, because we, had, did we, what did, what, did, what did you get, you had oxtail? I, feel like uh, you had oxtail. I did have oxtail. Yeah. yeah. What did you, but next time what did you come have? Out here, I gotta take you to Randy's. For, mm, for yes, because, yeah. you know, there's, yeah, we don't have as many of those kind of establishments here, so uh, yeah. I get my, getting my fix out there. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, if I could, like, mail you some, <laughs> I would, because, like, yo, Randy's patty, I'm going to take you, like, any, anyone who knows me knows I love Randy's, and, like, that's, like, that's, like, a go-to spot where I'm like, yo, if you want the best patty in the city, like, 
we're going that's to it yeah. all right we're doing yeah. it <laughs> yeah so more and more snacks more, more snacks food. it's coming it's coming it's coming <laughs> thank you so much for your time it was really good yeah, to see you friends yeah yeah, yeah so. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully everything went well. Hopefully I answered all your questions. Yeah, you know, no, you did. I, I really always love talking to you. So um, yeah. we'll talk real soon. Yeah, just uh, keep me posted with everything. You know, thank you for I this. Know. Just like, you know, big up yourself and everything that you've been doing with this podcast and just like the stuff that we were talking about, like some of the ideas that you were talking about with me and stuff like that, like just keep it up. Yeah, this is uh, connecting. I I'm with you. Connecting is really, really important. Connecting with others and uh, being better, as you said. Um, I was going to ask you too, um, for your, for the podcast, where do you guys usually, um, where is it usually uh, broadcast on? Yeah, it's on, it's always on Spotify and then on wearethecraft.com. So you can, you can stream on, on either one of those. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you guys are officially, you're you're, uh, (laughs) on Spotify, you know, you're good. So yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, I'll talk to you. So- I'll talk to you soon. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. big hugs. Yeah. All right. Yo. Bye. All right, Bye, Jay. Bye. If you enjoyed that last conversation, be sure to check out more episodes of The Craft on Spotify and guest photo galleries on the website at wearethecraft.com. Thanks again for listening.